You are listening to Tales from the Ridge. Episode 8, The Good Ship Genesis. Eli cussed loudly as she bashed the top of her head against the width of pipe she had been hunkered under for over an hour. You okay down there? Called out Hiram, his voice pinging off the many steaming tubes of metal that crisscrossed overhead. Fine, fine. Eli shouted back rubbing the furred tip of her head, her pointed fox-like ears pinned back in annoyance. Seems like whatever you did down there did the trick. Hiram's voice was a bit more muted as he looked back toward the cockpit. Everything seems to be working. At least well enough as it always is, at any rate, Eli replied as she began to climb up the ladder that had led her down into the belly of the good ship Genesis. Tell Micah I want extra rations for that little stunt, she shouted up. That fix was not on my docket today. When there was no immediate answer from Hiram, Eli looked up, only to see Captain Micah himself standing at the top of the ladder. His orange eyes glowed as he peered down at her, black fur absorbing the light that haloed his small frame from behind. We all do our part, Sister Eli. Micah's voice was dangerously smooth. We should not ask reward for blessing the ship with our skills. Yes, sir, said Eli, mutely, the fur of her cheeks fluffing out in embarrassment. We are all grateful to have a mechanic of such skill aboard. I wouldn't spoil everyone's goodwill with greediness. Micah moved away from the ladder, allowing Eli to pull herself up. He clearly did not expect a reply from her, having already begun to walk back toward the bow of the ship. Hiram's half-hooded aged eyes bounced back and forth between the two Vox. Once Micah was out of earshot, behind a hatch door, he let out a wheezy breath. You better watch yourself, Eli, he warned. Folks wind up regretting making too much of a ruckus around these parts. I'm beginning to think it was a mistake taking this job, Eli murmured, wiping the black grease of her work from her hands with a rag. Where else would you have gone? Hiram asked innocently. Vox aren't wanted nowheres, it seems, except amongst our own kind. And not even here, clearly. Eli jerked her head toward the door where Micah had disappeared. Just be happy to have a bunk and food, Hiram murmured. More than most have. Ain't you tired of settling for that, Hiram? Asked Eli, genuinely. Hiram shook his head and began to move toward their next assignment for the day. You youngins have too much ambition. Ain't safe to be around you. Eli had to smile at that. Later that night, in her bunk, Eli couldn't put her thoughts to rest. Her few months aboard the Genesis had been eye-opening, to say the least. In the wake of the genocide that had taken the Vox homeworld and sent its inhabitants scattered amongst the stars, more than a few nomadic ships had become, well, cult-like. Eli had heard rumors that the Genesis was one of these, but hadn't believed it enough to not take a paying job. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Still, there was something insidious about the mood aboard the large steamer. Captain Micah, though supposedly democratically elected from the crew and civilians on board, seemed to command more like a demagogue than any commanding officer she had yet had the pleasure to meet. Folks whispered his name, as if the sound of it alone could summon him. 
The intercom was locked away, only accessible with a pass from the circle of officers that operated beneath Micah. The speakers themselves regularly spat fuzzy commandments that were, in Eli's humble opinion, outdated at least, and impractical amongst the stars at best. The Genesis was treated like a living god, and Micah its mouthpiece. Gave Eli the willies. It was with these thoughts that she finally drifted into a restless sleep, only to be woken, what felt like moments later, by the blare of the dawn alarm. Eli felt a rapid series of kicks against the underside of her bunk. I'm up, I'm up, she loudly groaned to Zion, her bunkmate. Zion was a young thing, barely older than a pup, with eyes so blue they were near white, surrounded by a white face of salt and pepper fur. I get to work the navigation system today, the young Vox barked out excitedly. How do you wake up like this? Eli rubbed at the top of her long snout with the back of her paws. I've always been a morning person, or that's what Ma says anyways. See you in the mess. And with that, the Vox disappeared through the door. Eli hopped down from the top bunk with a sigh, pulling on her uniform, eyeing its wrinkled state from having spent the night in a heap on the floor. As if by divine intervention, the intercom droned one of its morning messages. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah, yeah, Eli sighed. She turned to the large valve that swung open the door, feeling its weight pull out of her hands as it swung back shut behind her. The hallway was full of multicolored fur. Every vox not on morning shift already was headed to breakfast in the mess hall. Eli's stomach grumbled on cue. The scent of breakfast rations, usually some sort of basic soppy grain topped by freeze-dried fruits, wafted down the corridor. Eli fell into step behind Iram, who nodded at her, still in conversation with his partner, Amos, who worked in the bio-gardens. It's just odd, is all, she caught the other elder Vox's whisper. He's rationing a large portion of oxygen for his personal quarters, more than he should need. You know what I say, Amos. Ain't worth digging our snouts into places they don't belong. Hiram, could you grow a spine for a moment or two? Eli giggled at Amos's impatience. Amos, if Captain Micah has a reason to be, ain't no reason on the logs. Amos's voice barked, and a few heads turned to gape at the trio. Hiram patted his partner's furred hand and spoke through gritted teeth. I don't want to hear no more about it, and if you knew what was good for you, you wouldn't speak about it again neither. The two elder Vox walked in silence for the rest of the jaunt to the mess hall. Hiram seemed so unnerved by his partner's ire and Eli's curiosity that he moved ahead of them in line to speak to another engineer. Eli spoke without looking at Amos. I want to know more. Thought you might? Amos smirked as he picked up a heavy plastic tray and held it out to the KP officer who loaded up the bowl of oats and flattened, soggy-looking, freeze-dried mangoes it came with. Eli held out her own tray and waited to speak again until they were between the food station and the coffee. I've noticed some strange things, Mose. She used the name of endearment, only a few were allowed. Energy readings that peak at strange times, a bit of rewiring here and there that don't make no sense. Eli's voice drifted away as they both approached the coffee stand and took their one allotted cup. The ceramic was cool against the pads of her paw as she set it down on the tray and followed Amos toward an open seat. That's not the half of it. Amos glanced around as they sat, immediately spooning a portion of breakfast into a snout. I've got other folks who you could speak to. Every unit seems to have some sort of issue. Eli stuffed her face with large spoonfuls of oatmeal and wiped at her face with the sleeve of her uniform. Can you give me names? Amos nodded. Tonight, just before roll call, when you come back from duty with Hiram, I'll have him. Eli's face spread in a sloppy grin, and she patted Amos's paw with her own. The rest of the day seemed to drag on. Every bolt Eli had to tighten, every wire she rerouted, every pipe patched seemed to take an eternity. It was no help that Hiram had lost interest in speaking to her, greatly disapproving of her egging Amos into whatever conspiracy she was plotting. 
The only time he showed his true feelings was in a moment where Eli nearly slipped and fell into the fuel tanks, reaching out a paw to grasp her uniform and pulling her into his heavy-set arms. Be careful, he said, voice shaking. You're all heart, Hiram, Eli said quietly, her eyes still staring down into the writhing black vat of fuel. Hiram released her, his cheeks fluffed out in agitation. Just be careful, that's all. Mm Mm-hmm, was Eli's response. Amos was nowhere to be found at dinner. Hiram's leg bounced nervously beneath the table for the entire meal. Relax, Hiram, Eli said through a bite of buttered noodles. Ain't the first time he's missed supper. The garden is a tough gig, unpredictable. I know, Hiram hissed back. Eli shut her mouth and swallowed hard. Somewhere in the pit of her stomach, a sliver of doubt pinched uncomfortably. Attention, citizens of the good ship Genesis, the first mate's voice broke over the intercom. When you've finished your meal, please dispose of the refuse responsibly and then return to your seats. There will be a special announcement from Captain Micah at 1800 hours. Hiram's eyes went wide as dinner plates, landing accusatorily on Eli. What? Eli spat, losing a noodle in the process. What you looking at me for? Hiram stood quickly, leaving to go dump his tray and return his dishware. Eli sighed loudly, quickly stuffing the last of a small can of peaches into her maw before doing the same. They had just returned to their places when the intercom gurgled again. The entire room hushed. It wasn't often that Micah made a non-pre-recorded announcement. Eli could hear the blood rushing through her ears. She pinned them back in anxious nervousness. Fellow citizens, Captain Micah's voice was cool and inscrutable. It has come to my attention that there are some of you who feel as if an injustice is currently ongoing aboard our ship. Eli could feel Hiram's eyes burrowing their way into her skull. Brother Amos of the Garden has been arrested on charges of conspiracy and, quite possibly, even mutiny. The next word was lost in the sudden gasp of the gathered crowd and the wave of whispers that washed over them. Through it all, Eli heard Hiram begin to sob. He has been taken to the brig, where he will remain until he can stand court-martial when we reach Station Gamma. Court-martial? Eli snarled. This is Captain Micah signing off. As the intercom clicked off, the room burst into noise. Hiram rushed toward the door, Eli hot on his trail. Hiram, she called after him, already buffeted by the crowd of Vox as the security crew tried their best to usher everyone to their bunks. Leave him be, Eli. Zion appeared at her side. I'd be upset if I were him. I mean, it ain't fair that Amos is being court-martialed, but Hiram's acting like he's been jettisoned out of the airlock for Pete's sake. Eli squeaked back, her body already aching with guilt. Eli, you don't get it, do you? Zion's wide eyes turned to hold her gaze. If he's convicted, he will be. Eli practically stumbled into their bunk, Zion closing the hatch door with a heavy thump. What? was all Eli managed in response as she sat down on her roommate's thin mattress. Ain't the first time somebody's been picked up on charges of conspiracy and mutiny, Zion said in a whisper that was barely audible. And last time, it was a quick trial followed by an even quicker exit, if you get my drift. Zion continued to get ready for lights out as Eli numbly moved through her routine, barely cognizant of her own movements. When the hot fluorescent bulb above her bunk finally blinked out, there was only one thought in Eli's mind. If Captain Micah wanted a mutiny so badly, he was going to get one. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Tales from the Ridge. This podcast would not be possible without the support of all of my patrons. Mara, Rachel, A.B., Robert, Mitzt, Claire, Susasaurus, Matthew, Tisum, Vicky, Michael, 
Willow, Jill, Orsoya, Jessica, Franchon, Fritz, Rodney, Andrew, Megan, Kira, Katie, Camille, Emily, Andy, and Kat. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. We have a tiny following right now, but we're growing every single day, and every new listener means the world. Give me a shout out on social media. Just search Ari Levy Author, and you'll find me. And as always, thanks for listening. Down into the fuel tanks. Oh my god, this is like the longest sentence. So. <laughs> Break it up if need be.